up to this point, WCW has just been a traditional wrestling company. And Ole Anderson is the first person who comes in who actually seems to be genuinely a bit demented. (laughs) And he's the first in a long line of people who come to WCW and go mad (laughs) and are allowed free reign to just be mentally ill. It's amazing. It's amazing. So this is Ole Anderson's first pure uh, pay-per-view. This is also a period where WCW starts to break away from the NWA. So what they're doing is they're pulling away from this old territory system and they are now sort of going, we are an autonomous organisation just like WWE. So there's a real attempt to emulate the success of the number one game in town. Um, So, I mean, the other thing that's really important here is Robocop. (laughs) Mark, you have no idea. Every time the word Robocop comes up in this pay-per-view, I can't stop laughing. Horseman, you said you were going to take me out. You said I'd never wrestle again. But you made a big mistake when you started messing with the little stingers. So now the time has come. And Flair, if you think you're invincible... Think it over, Creed. The, the title of it, they're at the DC Armoury on Armed Forces Day, and yep. it's the return of Robocop. It's amazing, Why isn't it? Why is he even there? Why is he there? I believe it was to do with the fact that Robocop 2 was out. Oh, and what this is, is this is WCW saying, look at us, we're in the entertainment business. Yeah. Look, we've got a big star. <laughs> you know, you might have Willie Nelson singing at WrestleMania 7. <laughs> we have got Robocop, and he's doing some business with the lads. Right? <laughs> The thing about Robocop is, <laughs> what it does is it tells you two things. One, <sighs> WCW is not going to get this right. It's uh, going yeah. to try, but it's on a budget, <laughs> and, whoever, and, it, and it doesn't get it right. And whoever owns Robocop, I mean Cyberdyne Industries, obviously, um, <laughs> whoever owns Robocop are quite protective about what they will allow Robocop to do yep. and not do. Yep. People are saying the word Robocop for more seconds he's actually appearing at this NWS. <laughs> it's WCW absolutely Cup Cup. true. As we anxiously await... Robocop, and of course, Robocop! It is indeed Sting and Robocop. A Robocop. But here comes Robocop, Bob! And look at Robocop now as he's approaching. Robocop going right to the cage. But straight uh-huh. by Robocop! Uh-huh. And Ole Anderson saw Robocop pull that, that steel door. Sting and Robocop. He and his buddy Robocop, especially the Stinger and Robocop. Right. So we have a, a quick little interview with the four horsemen. Here. Yes. And one of them is a fellow who we've talked about, and that's Ole Anderson. Yes. So he is there looking gruff. A one-man wrecking ball. One-man <laughs> wrecking crew, part of the Minnesota wrecking crew at one yeah. point. He looks vaguely sort of a hobbity. Mm. He doesn't look like a friendly boss. He doesn't like the sort of person who you can deal with. He did write a book that covered a lot of his period in WCW, uh, and it was called, ooh, I forget the main title, but the subtitle was How Corporate America Destroyed Wrestling. Wow. Um, uh, he was very much a man of the old school. <laughs> the very fact that you could stick him in a photo from 1890 and he, he wouldn't sort of like go, no. oh, that guy doesn't belong there. <laughs> it tells you a little about what he was like. He looks like a simpleton. He looks like the sort of man who may, if you have ever had anyone who's lived in local woods to you, <laughs> he looks a bit like they could be that, where they just go, yeah, he's been there as long as anyone can remember. Scared of hairdryers. Um, <laughs> Arn Anderson, he's there in his shaded glasses. He does not look like a wrestler. No, he looks like a man who has a rumpus room. He, he looks like a... In a minibar. If you'd have said, yeah, he's, he's the head of the union for airline pilots. <laughs> yes. Go, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. He is the least wrestling looking man. Yeah. And yet he is one of the great wrestlers. I yeah. mean, he is so good in the ring. Oddly, <laughs> he's one of the first people that I really gravitated towards when I started watching him. At the time, he was in WWF in a tag team with Tully Blanchard. Right. And he was one of the few people who wasn't a character. Yeah. He was just this guy. Dude. This, like, you know, man who. Don't need it. He's like a gas man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, he's so good. Yeah. Arn Anderson looks like an 80s photo shoot with a baby where they've put like 80s grown up men clothes on a baby yeah. like you could you could cosplay as Arn Anderson as a baby like you, you I could dress it look give me a baby <laughs> give me your child Mark I will dress your child up as Arn yeah, Anderson he, he, and there was a weird thing where like he and Ric Flair were very close you know career wise they yeah, sort yeah. of you know stuck together a long time mm. when they're together they almost get more powerful yeah the two of them get better they're from both the proximity great, of each other they're both great talkers I could watch them just hang out 
I just oh, like to see them hang out. Absolutely. And Jesus Christ, when you see Flair at this point, where he's riding the crest of his peak years, yeah. this point when you see him on the mic and he's so confident and he's so... The fire is there mm. and, he, and you don't worry about him, which is what you start doing in WWE <laughs> as it goes on. You start going, oh, God, I hope he doesn't... Oh, he seems Doing to be budget. losing yeah, the thread. Yeah, yeah. In this, he's just so fucking on it. Yeah. Oh, it's thrilling. When you walk that aisle, you pay the price for thinking that one day in your life you are half the man that I am every day as your world heavyweight wrestling champion. And Psycho Sid's at the back wearing a tuxedo way too small. Yes. <laughs> Where's he going to find one that fits? The collar is so tight. But- Approaching the locker room of Sting now and his newfound ally, Robocop. Or may I just point out? Robocop! Robocop! He's coming out! Yeah! We can you tell! Better get the party started. Gordon Sawley's saying oh, something's going on. What a time for the feed to start breaking up. The doors are open, Robocop oh. comes out of the door, but then the camera starts glitching. It gets knocked oh, to the not floor. Now, oh, not no. now! Robocop's got microwaves <laughs> pumping out of him, <laughs> and it's affecting the cameras, and it would therefore infect everyone's soft organs. <laughs> right. Got to be more careful. Again, there's a funny bit of sort of Gary Michael Capetta here where they don't just let Sting come out they've, they've got this sort of spiel that's building up and it's just hokey where he's going so many little stingers have been calling for him he's explosive he is charismatic <laughs> so my people have debated it this is Sting and out comes Sting dressed like shit <laughs> he's got his fucking gold gym wife beater on it's so loose and let me make it clear he co-owned a gold gym with Lex Luger did he right so okay, don't yeah. think that that's just a oh I've just thrown this on he's literally advertising his own outside business with it and he's got those pink baggy gym pants yeah and out comes the ultimate police officer wow robocop yeah ladies and gentlemen the nation's number one law enforcer he serves the public trust protects the innocent upholds the law the ultimate peace officer for RoboCop as he makes his way to the ring. The thing about movie magic is... (laughs) You can't just choose any old camera angle, and they can't even get their own stars right. They fuck with Robocop. All right, the suit is fine. That is it. It roughly looks like Robocop. It doesn't necessarily look like he's made of metal. It's just so... Do you know what I've always felt with audiences is you can do anything with an audience Mm. so long as you take them by the hand and you say, trust me on this, I know where it's going. All right? You know, you don't have to worry, I'm a pro at this. And what Uh, this is, is everybody there, really quickly, as he comes out, they go, I don't know what this is going to (laughs) be. And the more... People begin going, I don't know what this is going to be. Yeah, because Robocop is at his very best uncharismatic. Yeah, he, doesn't do, he can't do anything. But he doesn't you, speak. But you suddenly have that thing of going, so what, is he going to shoot one of them? <laughs> what, what's he going to do? Because he can't do anything. <laughs> what are they going to do? Is, is Are they going to knock him over? And then, yeah, I, they can't, I just don't know what it is. Because he can't lose. He can't get into a match because he's a rigid plastic man. Yeah. I don't know who's in that suit, but he's got a big old arse. <laughs> there's big old arse upholding the law. Oh, there's a bit I loved with the actor in there. So there's a cage which Jim Cornette has been put in. Again, <laughs> like another throwback to the territories. Yeah. Having a manager in a shark cage at ringside. <laughs> Sting gets thrown into there by mm. the horseman. Um, why? <laughs> what What are they doing? So what were the horsemen thinking Sting was going to do? He was going to come out and go, hey, it's my friend Robocop, everyone meet Robocop, and they're like, ah, we can ruin this. <laughs> right? 
Get what? in the cage. What? You've still got Robocop to... Yeah. And, and what's the thing about the cage? You put him in the cage, what's going to happen? I mean, either they're going to open it or they're just going to take him to the back. <laughs> it's not It's not like he's going to die. He's going to starve to death in the cage. <laughs> anyway, Robocop comes out and he's obviously been told when Sting's put in the cage, what yeah. you're going to do is you're going to bend two of the bars, mm. then you're going to pull the door off. Yes. And you could just get the door off, but do the bars as well. <laughs> right? Because it shows spray, very powerful. We spray painted two pool noodles. Yes, exactly that. And he takes the thing off and Sting comes out and he's like, whew, that was lucky. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Look at brought the man I've been talking about for the last one. Oh, blow, I've been stuck in there forever. You know, or, or, or whatever. Do they even play Robocop's theme? Like the <laughs> iconic... No, 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 no. A wonderful piece of no. orchestration that would give it some semblance of authenticity. Yeah, I don't think they've told him more than that. Yeah. Because there isn't much more than that to it. <laughs> But what happens is Sting is is like, obviously, uh, backstage he'll be like, and I'll say thanks and, you know, that sort of thing. What he means is when we get out there, I'll do it properly. So <laughs> as he gets out, he's like, whoo, lucky. Like that. And he slaps Robocop on the chest, like wrestlers would do. You yeah. know, good man, that sort of thing. Yeah. And Robocop looks down at where the hand is <laughs> and he's got a slight fucking smile like he's about to go, Try that a fucking again. <laughs> Try that a fucking again, and I will shoot you in the fucking head. And you can see Sting sort of go, okay, this guy is more tense than maybe he should be. But your biggest baby face can't get out of a box, and he has to rely on an artificial character that isn't real. And you've got your big villains, and you're like, they are scared of Robocop. Robocop is better than everything we have. And when you bring in the characters that aren't real into wrestling, you start going, yeah, nothing's real, is it? No. It's a really I, bad... Do you understand how hilarious it is that you're saying Robocop? <laughs> like, it's so... It's the fan fiction of a child. It really is. But also... And Robocop and Superman will join forces <laughs> and they will uh, do a kickflip over but the bridge. Whoever's in charge of this, and they were adults, they've said, let's make it clear that Robocop and Sting in real life are friends because Robocop is so cool that people will think that Sting is also really cool. He's on his second film. He's Who so watched cool. Robocop 2? <laughs> I can't remember. I remember Robocop 3, the video game. I oh, think it. Robocop 3 was scripted by Frank Miller before oh. he went real cool. Crazy. Cool. <laughs> he went real crazy. And yeah. do you know what he does after that? Nothing. Fuck off. He goes home. Why are we putting Robocop over <laughs> at the expense of everyone who puts food on the table? It's Simple. Fucking... Robocop's fine. <laughs> Robocop's fine. What's bugging you, Murphy? Drugs. Drugs bug me. Hi. That was Nancy Allen on me. I'm Peter Weller, the guy behind that mask. If you're a kid, please listen for a second. How do you keep away from drugs? They're everywhere, sometimes even at home. But there is one place you can go that is 100% drug-free. No pot, no pills, no crack, no smack, no coke, no exceptions. The Boys and Girls Club. It beats the streets. No kidding. 